If you're going to date a black woman in America, you need to know that the chances are you'll most likely run into sisters who come from this background and have the qualities, personalities, and characteristics we're going to discuss in this video. So let's start with where she came from and her upbringing as a child. She was born in a household which has a financial structure that promotes paycheck to paycheck located in the inner city. In that community, she was exposed to violence and trauma, both within the household and outside the household. Her experience include neighborhood violence and domestic violence, which has a lasting impact on her mental health and well-being. Her family struggled to meet basic needs like food, clothing, and shelter. Her experience with material hardship when it comes to food, insecurity, inadequate housing, and minimal access to essential resources has programmed her mindset to make it her goal as a grown adult to frame her lifestyle to where she can eat as much as she wants, shop clothing, and buy a big house without the fear of obesity, living paycheck to paycheck, or foreclosures, which predisposes her to be the number one consumer of fast food and junk food, ranging from flaming Hot Cheetos to McDonald's chicken nuggets, also number one in having the highest rates of home foreclosures. External factors motivated black women in poverty to accept outside assistance at the expense of removing black men out of the households. Additional external factors like liberal groups motivated black women to internalize and embrace independency and vacate traditional relationship dynamics which decreased the level of submission from a woman to a man and elevated the likelihood of divorce and chance of a child being raised by a single mom. So in this situation as a young black daughter it is common for her to take on caregiving responsibilities for her younger siblings or other family members due to parental schedules, illnesses, or other factors, which impacted their ability to focus on their own education, extracurricular activities, or personal development. Also, it shaped her mentality to be okay with raising children alone so long as she birthed multiple children in which the oldest sibling can help around the house regardless if the kids come from a single man or multiple men. And having knowledge that child support and social security pays less because the children will have to split the balance if they all have the same man on the birth certificates, which exposes a hustle and makes multiple baby fathers a more lucrative option for the woman financially. Okay, now moving on. She's graduated, grown, and out of the house and able to make decisions on her own. Need I remind you, as a highly likely non-virgin adult right after high school just before deciding to go to college. She experienced almost 20 years of stress, depression, anxiety, and neglection from her upbringing. In most situations, she had no control, no say-so up until now. The last thing on her mind is the idea that a woman is to be submissive and cooperative and dependent on a man to lead her and cover her as his wife. And the very idea of this triggers post-traumatic stress which makes pursuing undergrad and independent lifestyle the only option she can mentally digest. Unfortunately, none of her friends attempt to correct her tainted memory of her mother speaking negatively about her father and efforts to change how she pictures black men because they also come from similar upbringing and also have not considered therapeutic rehabilitation or reaching out to their fathers. Okay, moving on. Now we know at this time, in between 18 and 21 years of age, any man who vests her and date her for commitment knows she will be most impressionable at this age. But because her unwillingness to seek help and surround herself by a circle of women who are successfully maintaining a relationship, her interests and focus are on building and working on herself and which most women call single by choice. So anything that doesn't point toward individuality is dismissed. But that doesn't mean her need for attention, validation, and sex is dismissed, which makes social media, birth control pills, and casual sex a more attractive option. So she is for the streets by default. And the men she runs into in college will be entertained and get recreation, so long as they do not try to mold her into what they want her to be. Because her goal is to graduate and pursue a career which can yield an independent lifestyle. Okay, now she's done with college and in between 22 and 30. Lucky you if you have found her childless at this point in her life. She is ready to work in the field of industry that she earned her degree in. But her mind has changed and it's not because of a miracle or therapy. She has accrued a massive amount of student loan debt, not including any other debt accumulated outside of education. She is well educated, but has a negative net worth, which can take years and years to account for. And the company that hire her highly likely has nothing to do with what she studied in college. And the money earned is not enough to save and invest and pay off debt. So committing to a man has instantly come from the last thing on her mind to her main focus. She has now dismissed individuality, but she has not dismissed the lifestyle she desires, which means means any man she entertains will have to earn as much as she does or more. Now, if you are the man that earns as much as she does, she'll want separate accounts up until she gets pregnant, equal say and control on how the relationship flows, sex will be a chore, submission will be conditional, girls night, girls trips, shopping sprees, and if she is not happy, you will be dismissed. If you decide not to marry her with her past and her debt, you will be dismissed. Oh, and in case I didn't mention it, 
If you try to mold her into a different woman, get her to accept your principles and standards, you will be dismissed. Now, if you're the man that earns more than her, she'll want to join a count and she'll likely decline premarital agreements. You'll have final say on how the relationship flows as long as she has access to your credit cards. Sex won't be a chore as long as you plan to help her out of debt. Submission will be unquestionable as long as you already earn or plan to earn enough to become the sole provider. She'll nurture your children and maintain a household. Oh, I almost forgot. If you don't make her happy, she will dismiss you. Now, your question may be, why can't she just cooperate? Or why is she incompatible? Well, if you were paying attention in the beginning of the video, we spoke about her upbringing as a child and the trauma she experienced while she was in the streets. You'd see that it was critical for her to connect with her father, get therapy, and surround herself with women who has successful relationships and pursue qualities that makes her a suitable wife instead of an independent individual. But when those relationships fail, and believe me, they do, she will now be ready to unsubscribe from Pandora's on YouTube and cancel her Sprinkle Sprinkle memberships, Sprinkle Sprinkle, and then actually seek therapy from a qualified official. Now she has gotten therapy and she's given her life to God. She is around 35 to 40 years of age. She has had all her kids, don't want any more. She will not have sex until she is married because the Bible says so. She is ready to submit, cooperate, and do whatever you ask. Her past has no power over her influence anymore. All of her friends are married and brag about the beauty of blended families, which gives her even more motivation. She's sagging a little bit and got a little weight on her because she don't have time to take care of herself due to the workload and stress of raising her kids. She needs you and she wants you. But this will not last, so you better get in while you can. Because once her kids get to the point where they're old enough to either take care of themselves or leave the house as adults, she'll backslide. She will revert to her old ways and her demands and standards will be reintroduced. Once those kids are gone, she'll still be collecting social security and child support and won't give it a second thought if this is how it all ends. As long as she got her soap operas, pets, and penis from the married man down the street from time to time, she can now enjoy her individuality and lifestyle she initially sought out there 20 years ago. Welcome to America, brother. See you on the next one.